The President's executive agreement with Britain, by which 50 old destroyers are to be traded for naval and air bases ranging from Newfoundland to South America, will apparently meet with no active opposition. Mr. Wilkie said this afternoon that, I quote, the country, will un- the country undoubtedly will approve of the program to add to our naval and air bases and of assistance to Great Britain. It is regrettable, however, that the President did not secure the approval of Congress or permit public discussion prior to adoption, end quote. Our Washington correspondent, Mr. Warner, reported earlier this evening that if it had been put before either Congress or the Senate alone, it might have been defeated, and at any rate, there would have been very lengthy debate, but that now Congress can and will do nothing except for expressions of opinion in which criticism and approval are about equal. Many who had previously opposed transfer of the destroyers found reason or excuse for changing their minds in the opinion given the president by Attorney General Jackson. He cited as president the Louisiana purchase made from a belligerent during a European war. This was later followed by an act of Congress appropriating the purchase money and also by a treaty. But in this case, said Mr. Jackson, no appropriation was required as he held that the president had the right to dispose of unneeded naval material. And he also quoted a Supreme Court decision written by Justice Sutherland speaking of the very delicate, plenary, and exclusive power of the President as the sole organ of the federal government in the field of international relations. From these and other considerations, Mr. Jackson concluded that this executive agreement would not require Senate ratification. The rights to bases in Newfoundland and Bermuda, the President told Congress, were gifts. In exchange for the destroyers, we get the right to lease bases in the Bahamas, in four West Indian islands, Jamaica, St. Lucia, Antigua, and Trinidad, and in British Guiana. And also, we get a repetition of the British promise not to sink or surrender their fleet no matter what happens. Though Mr. Churchill characteristically added that these hypothetical contingencies seem more likely to concern the German fleet or what is left of it. The first reaction of the Axis powers to this transaction is to laugh it off. A government spokesman in Berlin said that it comes too late to affect the final outcome of the war and asked when the United States would be able to deliver the destroyers. Our London correspondent reported earlier this evening that British crews are already on the way over, presumably to Canada, to get them. In Rome it was felt, or at least said, that this was only a token transaction by which the United States consolidated its domination of the American continent and that it does not much alter the international picture. So far, nothing has come from Rome or Berlin to contradict the President's statement that this transaction is not inconsistent in any sense with our status of peace. A group of American Army and Navy officers headed by Admiral Greenslade flew to Bermuda this afternoon to confer with British authorities about establishment of a base there and may go on to visit other islands. Three German air attacks on London were beaten off today, and the British say that while a few bombs were dropped on Kent and Essex, little damage was done. Tonight, however, the Germans are raiding widely, with 13 towns in England and Wales reporting enemy planes overhead. Last night, the Germans again attacked west coast ports and factories in the Midlands. The British, too, were out last night, attacking munitions factories in the Rhineland and the harbor works at Genoa, where, according to the Italians, they did little damage. And the Italians say that they now have a new combination dive bomber and torpedo plane with which several British warships have been injured. Tahiti is the latest French colony to go over to General de Gaulle's group of free Frenchmen, and his followers say that all French islands in the Pacific are likely to take the same action. And that's the news to this moment.